very rightly said that the Church of England and the clergy itself has a feeling or has uh, possesses a sense of white Christian supremacy. And it's very much present in many institutions, particularly the religious ones. So this does uh, insinuate something, and that being that this kind of supremacist attitude might have a very strong religious sanction to it. So does this mean that Abrahamism fuel supremacy so abrahamism is a broad church if i can play on words um, within abrahamism we have the jewish community who are non-missionary they're non-conversionary and then we have two other branches cousins shall we say who are both very expansionist and both very exclusivist and both very supremacist and have a reputation deserved or undeserved, religiously sanctioned or not religiously sanctioned, the reality is the reputation is associated with a degree of violence and barbarism. Remember, there are no Hindus in a Christian heaven. Okay, now how much more discriminatory can you get? No matter what a Hindu does, they will never be allowed into this Christian heaven. It's like the old English golf clubs, isn't it? You, you couldn't be a member of an English golf club unless you were um, of a suitable um, profile. It's absolutely religiously sanctioned. And if you think about it, the conflicting guidance that's contained within religious texts is responsible. You know, it's a, it's a mental cognitive dissonance to be able to carry two conflicting ideas and give them both credence. Um, I find it amusing that people will take what they call the Holy Bible and place it under their hand in court and say the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. And yet if you read the Old Testament, it is full of sanction for the most criminal acts. And if you say to a person, well, why not just get rid of them? If you accept that they're criminal acts, why are they in this book? But they have to be kept in that book so that vulnerable members of society who can be influenced into or coerced into committing an act of violence can be given religious sanction and religious blessing for that act of violence. They can find it within these scriptures. And that is directly related to maintaining um, a divide and rule view of the, of the world and of communities and of countries. You know, we don't have that in any of our scriptures at all. You know, and even if it was there, we, we have the understanding that the human being is the greatest scripture that ever existed. Each of us is a data bank, a repository of the teachings of our civilization going back through its incredible trajectory. Um, and it's been a long journey and we have each of those within us. And so we ourselves are our own religious scriptures. We're the highest religious scripture. And we are in a journey of learning who each of us are by reading each other. So I will learn more about myself in reading you. You will learn about yourself in reading me. And this is part of the incredible journey and the dance that we're engaged in. So we do not have the, the need to maintain ancient scriptures full of conflicting guidance upon which violence has been perpetrated and which cannot be changed. So yes, violence can be enshrined in a scripture and it can be maintained by clerics and clergy for their own adva advantage and their own benefit. And these scriptures contain the words which can either liberate a human being in the case of our Shastra or words which can imprison a human being and enslave a human being without them ever realizing that that's what's been done to them. So we have, um, we have a responsibility again. Those people who have been conditioned from birth, they do not recognize that they have been conditioned from birth. And yet within Gyan Yog, within um, Patanjali's Yog Sutras, within so many of the Advaita Vedanta scriptures, there is a detailed explanation of how the human mind works, of how a human being can be freed of the mental knots that are placed in childhood. So we have the Vidya, and so we have the responsibility to actually engage with all of these damaged human beings. Often I think that if... Um, Humanity will look back maybe in a thousand years and they will look on what we call colonialism. They will look on those times as the times when clerics 
ruled the world. If you look at the contribution of clerics in the period of, of colonization, it wouldn't have happened unless clerics fueled it, propelled it, guided it, directed it, leveraged it, and, and harnessed it in order to do nothing other than grab wealth, power, and land. So clerics have a huge responsibility. I find it difficult to sit and have a conversation with a cleric where on the one hand they say that this scripture is divine and perfect. And they say, well, it's been misinterpreted and misunderstood. What, for 1400 years? That is, you know, either the scripture is flawed or the teachers are flawed. What do we fix? Either we fix 1400 years worth of really uh, abysmal teachers, um, or we look at what's the cause of their abysmal teaching. You can't have the two and just say, well, we're eternally on a, a journey of, um, human beings are imperfect creatures and we're on a journey of trying to attain perfection actually i'm sorry the evidence doesn't stack up and this is the at the heart of the abraham abrahamic missionary expansionism there is a wound there and that wound like all wounds is painful for the person the body that is suffering but it's also painful for all of those who are associated with it and we have to put we have to heal this wound so yes engage with every abrahamic person you can um, come across remember the human being even the abrahamic human beings are divine creations their programming is a little bit suspect we have to help debug them um, but we have to do it in a manner which respects that they too are divine creations and let's um let's educate them let's help them evolve and let's try and get rid of these um medieval institutions which are the repositories of such anti-human understandings and teachings. The world has had enough of such clerics. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, Please visit citti.net. Dhanavad, Namaskar.